Hey, 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 good morning, good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. Let's say, well, man, we got some stuff to talk about this morning. But before I get into the topic of the day, which is why trucking is not for the faint hearted, well, we got some crap going on in the world today. I'll get that in just a minute. But kind of show to my point here. Stuff on my face? No, man. Okay. But uh, anybody that's ever run with me know that I generally get up and I cook breakfast. Now I got in here to a receiver here in Dallas, Texas this morning. Uh, I had an 8 o'clock appointment. I got here about 7 30, got in the door. They're currently in the process of unloading me. As soon as they get done unloading me, whew, I'm deadheaded back home to Oklahoma. And I will uh, be grabbing me a rental car and headed up to the Panhandle and join Thanksgiving with family. Oh, excuse me. Got a bit of a cold this morning. A little runny nose anyway. But, uh, so I got here uh, this morning and I cooked breakfast. Now, there's no reason, you know, we're all sitting here in the door. There's no reason for me just to make breakfast for myself. So I made breakfast for, you know, about three or four drivers. And I just uh, fried up some sausage and scrambled eggs with some onions and a little bell pepper in it and some cheese, a little Miracle Whip on it, wrap it in a flour tortilla, call it good, right? Anyway, so I'm handing them out to the other drivers. I said, hey, good morning, brother. I cooked your breakfast. And most guys are like, like man, thank you. Even one of them uh, said, uh, God bless you, man. Appreciate it, you know. So, like that. But the the second driver I went up to said, No, no, no. You know, with all the things that's going on in the world, you just don't know what anybody's uh, doing out here these days. I'm like, Wow, call me a murdering son of a bitch right to my face, right? It's kind of the way I felt about it. But, never mind. I just looked at him and said, brother, can't be afraid to be living your life. Live your life. And he goes, yeah, I know. But anyway, on to the next one. Anyway, so I made breakfast for everybody this morning. That is not my topic of the day, though. Kind of got two topics here. First one, pretty serious. And I only heard this on one news agency. And I didn't hear it repeated anywhere else. But I heard that Antifa had made a threat to President Trump, stating that if he did not concede by Sunday, Antifa would be blocking all the roads come Monday morning and they'd be fully armed so nobody could go to work, nobody could get anywhere. They were going to shut the country down. And they were going to be fully armed at their blockades. And anybody that tried to breach their blockades would be shot. That's what they said. They also said immediately after that message went out on social media that all those social media accounts were immediately taken down and hush, hush, hush. And I only heard that on one one news outlet. I didn't hear it repeated anywhere else. But it definitely perked up my ears. Because as a, a commercial truck driver, we've been advised not to stop for protesters. Slow down, give them an opportunity to get out of the way, blow your air horn, and go on through. Just don't slow down enough to where anybody can jump on your truck. Now that's pretty much what I've heard from everybody. So, that's what we're supposed to do. I'm not going to advise anybody what they should do or not do. Or I'm going to say if you can, by all means, avoid the situation. But if I come up to a blockade and I can't turn around and get out of there, I ain't got no choice, folks. I'm just going to hammer down! <laughs> I'd like to jump out and return fire and just play with them for a little bit, but 
I don't think my company would like that too much, so we'll just hammer down and get on with carrying on freight. How about that? So, that was one issue I wanted to talk about. Another thing is, uh, you know, trucking definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Now, my run from Minnesota down here to Texas, it rained on me pretty much the whole way. And I'm sure that y'all have heard me talk about the fact that I would rather drive on snow and ice than drive at night when it's raining. Problem is, when driving at night when it's raining, is sometimes I can't see the lane markers. I can't see where the road is. It makes it very hazardous. So I'd rather run on snow and ice than I would at night in the rain. But I was on a tight schedule and I had to get down here, so I was running through the rain at night. And uh, the first night, it had just been drizzling, just enough to get the pavement wet and dark to where it was kind of hard to see the markers. And I was going through a construction zone, and I did. I slowed down to 45, just like the way it said. But it kept getting nearer and nearer, and then it took a little quick jog to the right, and then threw me into a cattle chute that I swear I didn't have six inches on either side getting through it. Now I got through it, and I didn't touch nothing. But I'm gonna tell you, I about messed the old man pants is what I'm telling you. Put the fear of God in me. And I said, you know what, that's enough. So I still had an hour and a half left on my clock, but I said, that's enough. And I grabbed me a rest area and shut her down for the night. And then uh, last night, just after I got into Texas, it was still drizzling rain, you know. But man, it was thundering and lightning off to the west, something fierce. And I thought, you know, the worst thing I want to do is get caught in this storm. So I grabbed me a rest area. And no more that I got parked and took the bangers for a walk and climbed back in the truck and here come a monsoon of a storm. Now if I'd been out there on the road, it would have been absolute living hell in the dark of night. One thing is when lightning's going off, at least you can see the road, right? But anyway, just another day in trucking, right? This is what we do. We move freight. Nobody said it was always going to be easy. Most of the time it is, but not always. Oh, before I get out of here, I want to give a shout out to Cody. Cody, I hope you watched the video this far into it. Cody's one of my fellow drivers at Magnum and uh, saddens my heart and makes me jump for glee all at the same time. But uh, Cody turned in his resignation and uh, he has quit driving for Magnum. Uh, Cody, you will truly be missed. And uh, we sure do appreciate all the things that you did for us here at Magnum while you were here. But here's where the jump for Glee comes to part. Cody did absolutely fantastic. He used Magnum as a stepping stone. Mag uh, Cody has bought himself a truck and he's going on owner operator. So Godspeed to you, Cody best wishes much success your way we hope the absolute best for for our friend cody let's see who else do i need to give a shout out to dead gummit i can't think of the guy's name anyway just finished our dap program you know i trained another uh, driver that come out of our dap program as a matter of fact, he was so well trained, I kicked him off the truck after 12 days, threw him in a solo truck. Told the boss man that it was a waste of uh, company time and uh, company assets keeping him on a training truck any further. First job in trucking. He'd been in our DAP program for about two months, you know, getting his CDL, running with LTL and some dedicated drivers there for a month or so. By the time he got my truck, he was fully trained. And since he'd been running LTL, you know, he's back in 10 times a day in a door. Uh, basically, all I had to do is teach him the OTR system, you know, the people net and all that kind of paperwork. 
other than that, he was good to go. So he was on his way. Let's see. I think that's about it. I am being unloaded. I still got a red light. I feel it shaking from time to time. So they're getting the freight off of there slowly but surely. As soon as I am unloaded, I'm dead heading back to Oklahoma. It is Thanksgiving for me. I want to wish all of y'all the best Thanksgiving. Hope y'all have a, a great one with your family. And I hope most of you get home. And for those of you that uh, aren't going home this weekend for Thanksgiving, uh, the rest of the world, we thank you. So keep it rolling, guys. Anyway, remember you two can change the world. All you got to do is be nice to each other. Bye-bye.